Hello and welcome to On the Record with me, Shireen Bhan. We're here at the Mahindra headquarters in Mumbai to talk about what the story looks like for the group going forward. Since he took over, uh, Anish Shah has been very, very clear about the fact that he wanted to consolidate operations, but he also wanted to focus on accelerating the core business as well as identifying what he calls our growth gems. To talk to us about what the road ahead looks like is Dr. Anish Shah. Always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us here on CNBC. CTV 18, many milestones that have been uh, uh, marked by the group and uh, uh, under your tenure, uh, 10,000 crores as far as profitability is concerned and a big rise in market cap. Of course, the markets have also moved higher from 2.41 lakh crore rupees uh, in 2021 to almost 3.81 lakh crore rupees today. You know, in our last conversations, you spoke about the need to focus on return ratios. You spoke about the need to repair the balance sheet. You spoke about the need to re-energize the core business as well as look for new areas and engines of growth. Where do you believe you find yourself in that journey today? So, Shireen, first, good morning. Pleasure to be here with you. And uh, we feel very good about where we are. I think our teams have done a fantastic job. We've had a very strong heritage. And many may not know this, but we were the best performing stock in the Nifty from 2002 almost at the inception of Nifty, till August 2017. And then we sort of had some challenges that we worked through. And what gives us a lot of pride is that we are once again the best performing stock in the Nifty for the last 21 years. Mm. Now, this is something that uh, one may not expect uh, of what we would call a diversified federation of companies. Mm. But Mindra is really the India story. We operate in 70% of industries that make up India's growth over the next decade. And what we are seeing is all our businesses are starting to really fire on all the cylinders. We started with discipline and capital allocation. As soon as we had a good handle on that, we pivoted to growth. And what we are seeing is mega growth across many of our industries. We've ratcheted the bar for growth as well. So as we look at our core businesses, auto, farm, tech Mahindra, and Mahindra Finance, um, we see tremendous growth on the auto side. Farm is in a very good shape. Mahindra Finance uh, has gone through a year of turnaround. We still have another year to go, but it's on a very good track. And Tech Mahindra has had some good wins and really getting poised for a greater turnaround under Mohit Joshi coming in as a new leader. So we've got a four core businesses in excellent shape. Our growth gems were started with a target of getting to a billion dollars of market cap in three to five years. We saw that many are getting close to that target, so we took the bar up a notch higher, and we said, that's not enough. Now we need to grow 5x in the next five to seven years to remain a growth gem. And uh, many of our growth gems have taken up that challenge. Uh, two of them have got external funding, mm. and external investors have accepted the plans that the business has as well. Uh, so today, I would just say that uh, our teams have done a fantastic job, very proud of what they've done so far. Well, you know, th that's a very comprehensive overview of where things currently stand for the group. But let me pick up, since you spoke about funding, let me address uh, a, a clarification. Uh, there is a lot of speculation and rumor around the fact that you're out there in the market looking for more funding as far as the EV business is concerned. I know you've just put out a, a, a disclosure to the exchange saying that there is nothing imminent or on the anvil at this point in time. But what should we understand that to mean? Uh, are you actively looking at raising more money for the EV business at this point in time? Or the 10,000 crore rupee capex plan that you have, is that already in place? So I'm glad you asked that, Shireen, because there continues to be lots yes, of rumors. Yes, practically every week. <laughs> right? And, you know, three weeks ago or so, there was an article saying that we are not looking for funding, etc. So we have never actively looked for funding in our EV business. Mm. Uh, even when BII came in, we had discussions with them at that point on a variety of things across the group. And they were very interested in EV. And we said that uh, we have enough capital. We are generating enough funds in our auto business. So we really don't need it right now. But at the same time, as they felt it was important and, and we felt that they could help us grow the business mm -hmm. well, we said, let's develop something. We didn't have a business plan at that point either. And uh, they kindly offered to develop the business plan jointly, which we did. And uh, we went ahead with that funding round. We have not appointed bankers at that time, nor now. Mm. So we have not been actively looking for investment. Uh, we have had a number of investors reach out to us. 
and with a select set of marquee investors, we continue discussions. And if someone is very keen and we find the right mix and we feel that they can add value to us, mm. then we will go ahead with it. Uh, so that's where we are right now. We are not keen to dilute a lot. Mm. So how, much, how much do you believe that you would like to dilute since you said that you are in conversation with several marquee investors at this point in time, though nothing close to closure? Uh, or is that me putting words in your mouth? So <laughs> I, I, let me just say at this point that BII has come in with a 25 to 3% stake. And uh, we may look at another 25 to 3% stake uh, at some point in time. Now, whether that happens in the next month, whether that happens in the next year, uh, is something I don't know the at this point The probability of it happening in the next month versus the next year, what are the odds on that? Uh, well, I think different people may put different probabilities well, on I'm it. I'm asking so you, just since, leave it, since, since you're the team lead. So, so I, I'll leave it at that at this point in time because these are always uncertain things. So I think a lot depends on both the investors and us. But the likelihood the right of match. BII coming on board in the second round, or are you likely to bring in more along with BII? Uh, I think BII has already put in their investment, and that investment is in tranches. So we will see that investment coming in tranches. So there may have been some confusion in the market saying that the tranches may mean they're mm. putting in more funding. But that's been announced, that's public already. Uh, so the discussions we have right now are a set of marquee investors uh, in addition to BII. Okay, in addition to BII, and uh, no timeline yet on when, the, when those conversations are likely to close. That's great. Okay, so let me uh, move away from the EV and the auto business because that is the business that the market understands and that really has been the core business as far as the group is concerned. Let's address uh, the other two businesses that you spoke of and gave us a quick snapshot on and I'll start by talking to you about Tech Mahindra. Uh, I know that this is a business you're very bullish about. You believe that there is significant headroom for growth but there's also a significant headroom or a distance between where Tech Mahindra finds itself and where the peers versus Tech Mahindra are, both in terms of growth as well as margins. How do you change that? So first, I'm glad you're looking at things beyond the group because we've often been looked at as an auto company. But as we look at our 10,000 crores of profit last year, 20% came from auto, 30% from farm, and 50% from services. So I go back to what I said earlier, which is we're really the India story. We play in a number of industries where India is very well positioned today. And Coming to Tech Mahindra specifically, uh, we are below on margins and therein lies the opportunity. Mm. Similarly, Mahindra Finance had not performed as well as its peers had. And this is something that we had to first acknowledge. We had to find why that was the case and address it. And I think the team there has done a very nice job now addressing that. And we see a much stronger performance over the last year. And with the changes that are being put in place, we will see Mahindra Finance really lead the market. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, in Tech Mahindra, uh, we feel that there have been a lot of good wins in expanding beyond telecom, in having new accounts, large accounts come in. There needs to be a lot more work done on margins. And uh, Mohit Joshi, as he comes in as a new CEO, working closely with CP as the outgoing CEO, will work together to address that. And mm -hmm. we feel that we know today what needs to be done. It will take time, mm. it's not going to be overnight, mm. but I would give it a two to three year horizon uh, for that to happen, similarly in terms of what we've done with Mindra Finance. Let's talk about the other business that you spoke of, where you had acknowledged to me when we last spoke that there was need for correction, and mm. you've been on that path of course correction, I'm talking about Mindra Finance. Mm. Uh, You've also got a leadership change on the anvil there. Raul Rubello will take over uh, when Mr. Ayer retires in April of 24. Mm. Uh, how satisfied do you feel in terms of where the ratios stand today? And what's the aspiration now in terms of growing that business in terms of disbursals so, and size? So very satisfied today in terms of where Mahindra Finance is. Uh, we had acknowledged that it had performed poorly versus its peers uh, over the last few years. And we had outlined the set of actions required. All of those actions have been taken. And Mahindra Finance is on a very strong trajectory right now, as seen from its, its results. Mm. Uh, Raul came in as a chief operating officer. We evaluated him to the CEO, so he's been a big part of this turnaround already. And therefore, it's not someone new coming in to be right. able to set it up. Uh, he's a fantastic leader. We had a very extensive search, and the board felt that uh, Raul was best positioned despite a lot of very strong candidates across the industry, many from banking. And uh, we've got a very strong team in place now. 
there's a huge focus on technology and data. Uh, there's a tremendous focus on asset quality and ensuring that we maintain a very strong asset quality. And uh, the results today bear that. We've had uh, GNPAs yeah. in the 8 to 9% range in the past, went up to 16%. Uh, today, they're in the 4 to 5% range. And uh, it's not just where they are today, it's the actions taken to ensure they don't go high again in the future at any point when there's an economic shock. So these are things that are really enabling Mahindra Finance to start showing the strength it has because the rural and semi-urban franchise that Mahindra Finance has uh, is better than anyone else that we've seen around. Mm. And that's something that has been, in a sense, hidden by some of the challenges in asset quality we've seen in the past. Mm. Uh, more the volatility, mm. not the losses, because the losses never came. It was just volatile in terms right. of provisions. Uh, but having taken that volatility out, I think it will help Mahindra Finance really be able to show the strength of its franchise. Okay, uh, that's as far as Mahindra Finance is concerned. But let me now address the issue of auto, because as you said, that the group has been known for its auto business. Demand has been strong, continues to look good at this point in time. Uh, you know, the expectation was that this was going to be a challenging monsoon. That fear seems to have ebbed. In fact, now we're talking about flooding and heavy rains across large parts of North India at this point in time. What does the order book look like, both on the tractor side as well as on the uh, vehicle side? So let me start with SUVs first. The order book continues to be extremely strong. And uh, we continue to see over 9,500 bookings for the XV700, for the Thar, 14,000 to 16,000 bookings per month for the Scorpio N. And uh, we've increased capacity. Uh, we've talked earlier about reaching 39,000, which we have. We will get to 49,000 by the end of this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. That will help us start meeting deliveries. That's the one thing we are very anxious about is delivering cars to consumers in a timely way, which we have not been able to do so mm -hmm. far because of the demand. Uh, so the demand continues to be just extremely strong. I think it's more a testament of the products that our team has developed. Mm. Uh, but on is, the supply chain side, because you did face challenges there, have those been ironed out now? Is that a thing of the past? Not completely. We still see about a 10 to 15% impact on production. So our production last month was roughly about 33,000 versus a 39,000 capacity. Uh, in the next couple of months, we hope to be able to bridge that completely and get to full capacity. Uh, so that, that has been a challenge. But as that eases out, mm. uh, we'll be able to produce more to be able to deliver to consumers. Uh, but the key here is the quality of the vehicles is a quantum jump over where it has been before. Mm. And therein lies a global opportunity for us as well. So as we do very well in India versus all the players in India, we are looking at taking Indian make products globally and, and winning in the global market. You, you know, you preempted my, my question because I, I wanted to pick up on what you said that Mahindra is really a reflection of the India story. And the India story at this point in time is also a story that wants to be much more integrated with the world. What is the global aspiration, not just for auto, but for the group? Uh, we make the best products uh, across all global players today, in auto in particular, in tractors, across many of our other industries. Uh, so we really want to be the India story that takes India global. It's not just for India, it's India for the world. Mm. But, you know, courtesy Tech Mahindra, there is that international exposure through the auto and the farm segment as well. But what could the international business contribute to Mahindra over the next five years? And which businesses do you believe are poised, outside of the ones that already have international exposure, which businesses do you believe are poised to go international? I'd say at this point... Tech Mahindra is there, of course. Auto and farm are going to be the two ones that we take global. The other businesses have a lot of room to run in India. We will do some things global there, but our approach still is have a very sharp focus. Mm. And that has helped us in what we've done so far. Uh, win in certain markets. Don't try and go out and do everything for everyone at one point in time. So where do you believe, in your words, you have the right to win in international markets outside of auto and Tech Mahindra? In, in the growth gems, are some of those spaces that you're also looking at, uh, you know, from, a, from an international point of view? Uh, not at this time, but that's something we will once they achieve their objectives in India. So our logistics business does have some things internationally right now, but we're still keeping that very small and very focused. Uh, our solar business has gone international in the past. We've pulled back a little because we feel there's a huge opportunity in India that we need to address. Uh, our last mile mobility or electric three-wheeler business We'll have lots of opportunities internationally, and that's something we will be looking at more aggressively. So for each business, we're looking at it based on 
where we see the business poised to take advantage of opportunities in India, mm. how well are they doing in India first, and then once we can win in India in a large way, then we will go global in a phase manner.